Mark Hill from Greenleaves. Quick commentary on the uh, European Union parliamentary elections here in the UK. Firstly, the Brexit Party. Now, the Brexit Party is the has received the inheritance of the 2014 UKIP result of 27%. And allied with UKIP, their vote is now 35%. Not much of an increase, you've got to um, say. However, there's something about this result which I think makes it much more dangerous than the 27% secured in 14, which was followed up by a parliamentary election in 15, at which UKIP won only one seat. The reason why is the Brexit Party's result is strong overall. They've come first, essentially again, but it's patchy. And that patchiness works very well under a first-past-the-post system. So, for example, the Scottish National Party uh, secured 3.6%. Um, but they've got, what, 25-odd MPs? Um, the reason why is because that 3.6% that the SNP score is entirely in Scotland. Now, the areas where the Brexit Party is strong tend to be... Um, the forgotten areas of the country, the sort of places that voted uh, leave heavily in 2016. And in some of those seats, they have beaten all of the other parties combined. In some of them, they've, com they've uh, uh, secured a very healthy first-past-the-post success. In other words, the, um, uh, the greatest uh, uh, minority of votes, which is the way the UK system works. So the Brexit Party now is an electoral threat to really both of the two major parties, which tend to be the, uh, uh, the occupants of the seats that we're talking about. Round my way, Wakefield. Absolutely obvious target for the Brexit Party. Um, and I think this means that the Brexit Party's result really forces the two major parties to reconsider their appeal.